Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Connect with the Myeloma Crowd chapter. For those of you that are new, this Connect with the Myeloma Crowd chapter was created because the Myeloma Crowd by Health Tree has created so many amazing programs and resources, and we want to make them widely available. They're free for myeloma patients and for myeloma caregivers. And that is why we have created this chapter. My name is Audrey Burton Bethke, and I am the Myeloma Community Director. And we have here today, uh, Cindy, Shim you might have to help me with your last name, Cindy. It's Shimaleski. <laughs> Thank you, Shimaleski and Paul Alstrom. I will be introducing them formally later on in the meeting after a couple of announcements. The first announcement is that this meeting is recorded and will be sent out to all registrants 24 to 48 hours after the event, um, along with slides that we're sharing today. Speaking of slides, I'd like to share those with you at this time. Oh, that's not them. <laughs> I'm working from home today unexpectedly, so thank you for your patience to try to navigate this together. Um, yeah, like a lot of places in the US, we're here in Utah and we have a big snowstorm today. Yeah, <laughs> it's been crazy. Okay, I think I have it ready now. If I can pull it up. There we go. Here's the slides. Okay, so we'd like to thank our community event sponsors, Bristol Myers Squibb, Amgen Oncology, Cario Farm Therapeutics, Abby, Adapt Adaptive Biotechnologies, Genetech, Oncopeptides, and Takeda Oncology. We'd like to take this chance to get to know our audience a little bit more. So we are going to do a poll and let's launch this poll. So hopefully you'll be able to see this poll and there's a couple of questions. There's about four questions and we'd love for you to participate and answer these questions. If you don't know the answer to a question, for example, what is your favorite health tree videos? Um, I'm not sure why they're all showing up at the same time. I thought you could do one at a time. But um, let's answer the first question at least. How many health tree videos, health tree university videos have you seen? So if you'd like to vote on that. Yeah, it looks we'll like we won't be able to see results until everyone's taken the entire thing. <laughs> Oh, really? Dang. All right, do your best. Again, thank you for your patience with us as we're learning this together. But um, let's answer those questions and then we'll reveal the results. The questions are, how many Health Tree University videos have you seen? What are your favorite Health Tree University videos? How long do you prefer your videos to be and what do you think about graphics and animations in our videos? As you can tell, the topic for today is Health Tree University. <laughs> and Cindy and Paul are the behind the scenes of Health Tree University. They do an amazing job. And I'm excited for you to get to know them more today, as well as Health Tree University and really what it is. Paul's going to be giving you a tour. Cindy's going to be explaining you know, how it came to be, how she got involved. So we're excited to uh, get that done today. <clears throat> so I think I can leave this up and continue sharing my screen. Let me know if that's not the case <laughs> because I'd like to formally introduce Paul and Cindy to you. So Paul Alstrom is the product manager and video production manager for Health Tree University. His mom, Jenny Alstrom, started the foundation after her myeloma diagnosis in 2010, and he is dedicated to helping patients just like his mother receive the education they need about their disease. Cindy Shmaleski, is that close? Yes. <laughs> is a awesome. Is a professional educator and myeloma advocate. As a former teacher, she now teaches myeloma patients how to advocate for themselves as the director of Health Tree University. She also has quite the Twitter following as the at myeloma teacher. So if you have Twitter and you want to follow her, I would highly recommend that. 
Today, like I said, we're going to be talking about the creation of Health Tree University, how it got started, and then we are also going to be asking at the end, there's going to be a question and answer session, but during that time, you're also welcome to type in suggestions for new classes for our curriculum, because really, we're just trying to make this great product even better, and with your feedback, we're going to be able to do that. So... Let's talk about what we've gotten so far. Um, it looks like there are lots of people that have watched zero to five videos, and then a lot of people that have watched several entire classes. So we have people <laughs> on both ends of the spectrum, which is great. Um, My Loma Basics is the most popular, it looks like, for our videos. And with the length of video, it looks like the preference is six to 10 minutes, which I would agree with because it's enough time to inform and not, a, not too much time that I'm bored. <laughs> what do we think about graphics and animation in our videos? The graphics and animations greatly helped me understand the doctors better was the highest result. And I would completely agree with that as well. Cindy, let's get started. And why don't you share with us you know, your, your myeloma story and then how you got involved with Help Tree and, and became the program director of Help Tree University. Sure. Thank, thanks for the kind introduction. And most of you know me, I'm Cindy Shemaleski, and I am the curriculum director here at um, Health Tree University, which means is I'm the one who thinks about what content should be included in Health Tree and then forms questions to ask the myeloma experts. And I also then get the opportunity to interview those myeloma experts and ask some questions so that we can include that content in Health Tree and suggest them what animation and graphics are. So that's my job. And then my colleague, Paul, gets to put all that together and produce the video. So he'll tell you more about his job and uh, take you on a tour of Health Tree University. But before he does that, um, they asked me if I would just share my story about living with myeloma and why education is so important to me. So here's my story. Um, 12 years ago, I was a passive bystander on my healthcare team. I would just blindly follow my doctor's orders without asking any questions. I wouldn't do research. I wouldn't even seek more than one opinion. But today I'm that engaged partner in my care. My doctors and I work together to determine the treatment that's best for me. And that, but this metamorphosis from this passive bystander to an active participant took a lot of time and hard work. 12 years ago, I was a fifth grade teacher. Teaching has always been my passion. Teaching is one of the main things that gives my life purpose and meaning. So the day that I was forced to retire from teaching because my myeloma was behaving badly was one of the saddest days in my life. Prior to my cancer diagnosis, I was suffering some debilitating back pain. Usually I would just tough these things out without seeking any medical advice. But this time, this back pain was starting to interfere with my teaching. So I scheduled an appointment with an orthopedic doctor. Without doing any imaging of my back, my orthopedic doctor diagnosed me with degenerative disc disease. And then I was prescribed pain medication and physical therapy. My instincts told me to ask, how do you know I have degenerative disc disease? Could it be anything else? Maybe we should do some x-rays in my back. But I was brought up in that age of doctor knows best. So I didn't ask any of those questions. Unfortunately, my discomfort did not improve with all the prescription medication I was taking, and even the physical therapy really had no effect on my comfort level. My pain was just getting worse. Now, if I were an empowered patient back then, I would have returned to my doctor and requested that he would do some additional tests, or better yet, I probably would have gotten a second opinion. But back then, that wasn't me. Back then, I was so timid that I didn't even want to bother my doctor anymore. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and I managed to get through the day by consuming enormous amounts of over-the-counter pain medication. But then one afternoon, after I missed a scheduled faculty meeting, my colleagues found that I was sound asleep at my desk. 
They insisted that I had to return to a doctor, so I reluctantly did. At that point, things went a little bit differently. When I told my doctor that I was always tired and the pain was just so debilitating that I couldn't really do much teaching anymore, he decided to take an x-ray. And the x-ray revealed that I had several compression fractures in my back, and that was probably the source of all my pain. So I was scheduled to have surgery to repair those fractures, but the surgery required that I have medical clearance from my primary care physician, who in turn referred me to a hematologist when my blood work revealed that I had severe anemia. And that's how I ended up sitting across from that hematologist and learning about my myeloma. I should have trusted those instincts and asked my orthopedic doctor to take images of my aching back way back then. But back then I did not know that patients and doctors worked together as a team. I didn't think of educating myself about degenerative disc disease so I could have intelligent questions and discussions and know what goals of treatment should be. My only discussion with my doctor revolved around what my weekend plans were going to be. Fighting myeloma became the biggest battle of my life. My induction therapy stopped working after just a few cycles. I was extremely disappointed with that, but I was still very hopeful. My myeloma specialist told me I probably should add a target therapy to my treatment and then go ahead with a stem cell transplant. And I did just that. But unfortunately, the transplant did not have the outcome that we all anticipated. My entire team had hoped that I would go into a complete remission after my transplant, but I only achieved something that they labeled a mineral response. I still had myeloma and a lot of it in my bone marrow. I was devastated and I was feeling very hopeless. But my myeloma specialist was very hopeful and he suggested many alternatives I can try. He gave me the pros and the cons of each of the suggestions and then he told me what he would do. But ultimately, the choice was going to be up to me. And it was at that point I realized that I was part of this team and that if I wanted to make educated decisions, I needed to educate myself. I am now an empowered partner in my team and patients who actively participate in their care seem to have better outcomes, fewer medical mistakes, and seem to be happier and healthier. My metamorphosis from that passive bystander to an empowered partner on my healthcare team did not happen overnight. First, I had to educate myself. The internet was my classroom and Facebook and Twitter and online and in-person support groups and countless podcasts and webinars and teleconferences. And even back in 2008, there was something called a listserv. They were all my teachers. Once I became empowered with knowledge, I had to practice speaking up and having my voice heard at my appointments. I would challenge myself to engage in meaningful discussions with my doctor. And at each consultation, I would ask at least two questions. I am no longer a passive bystander in my care, blindly following doctor's orders. I am now that empowered partner and I feel confident in those decisions I need to make. And I now encourage others to do the same thing. Being an educator my entire life, it's only fitting that I use my passion for teaching to share what I have learned and continue to learn about the importance of patient engagement, available myeloma resources, advocacy opportunities, and the latest myeloma research to a new group of students. My students now are myeloma patients, their caregivers, doctors, and anybody else who would listen to me. My classroom is no longer that one-story big brick building on Pond Road, but it's the internet. I use various social media sites such as for my teaching tools, such as my Twitter account at Myeloma Teacher that Audrey told you about. And I'm the administrator to our support groups, um, the Philadelphia Multiple Myeloma Networking Group, that's a mouthfuls, Facebook page. And I've also started my own Facebook page where I just share resources called the Myeloma Teachers Multiple Myeloma Resource page. Over the years, I became friends with Jenny because we did a lot of work together in the myeloma advocacy community. 
About two years ago, Jenny had this idea about creating this resource that would have everything you would need to know about myeloma in one place. And it would be organized in such a way that would be easy to find what you were looking for. She asked me if I would be interested in helping the myeloma crowd create that resource. Of course, I said, yes, this was right up my alley. So I became the curriculum director of what is now known as Health Tree University. Things have come full circle and I am back to doing what I love to do my whole life. I'm a teacher again. My audience may be different these days, but my passions for helping others learn is still the same. And I'm very honored to be part of this project. And it's very exciting. And that's my story. And right now I'm going to have Paul take you on a tour of Health Tree University. Then after that, we will have an open discussion and ask you things you like and things that you might see improvement and courses that you might like to see added. So we'll have that discussion later. But right now, Paul, why don't you take them on a tour? Hello, everybody. Thank you, Cindy, for your story. Cindy is a very inspiring person. And we're lucky it was to out of focus. <laughs> it was blurry. <laughs> now I'm not. There you go. All right. Well, I will go ahead and share my screen and I can give you guys a tour of Health Tree University. And as we're doing this, I would encourage you to, well, one of the things that, that is my job and Cindy's job is to look forward for things that we should be doing in the future for video production, um, the types of content you want to see. And in, in addition, um, features on the website that you want to see. So um, please, in the Q&A, as you're, as you're watching, submit ideas for classes and ideas for features. So I'll go ahead and give you a tour of the website. So here we are at healthtree.org, uh, university.healthtree.org. You can see here that we have a bunch of different programs here at the foundation. We've got Health Tree Cure Hub. We've got the university, we have the Myeloma Crowd news site, and we have our coach program. If you haven't checked out other programs, we encourage you to do that. Every, every program we have here at the foundation is to help patients just like you um, be empowered about your disease. And that's what Health Tree University is all about. We have been working on Health Tree University for a while now, and we have almost 300 lectures uh, in two, 22 courses. Uh, made by almost 100 leading myeloma experts. To, to put that in perspective, there are, are about 200 or so myeloma specialists in the world. And of, of those 200, we have about a half to a third of them, which is, pretty, which is pretty amazing. And all of them have volunteered their time. We also have these amazing sponsors we work with who help fund the program and uh, help fund me and Cindy and our video team to get all these videos filmed and turn into content you can watch. So everything starts here on this page. Um, we have getting started, Myeloma Basics, uh, building your healthcare team. And you, as you can see here, we have a lot of content. If hey, you're Paul, looking- Would you mind zooming? Would you mind zooming in a, a little bit? Cause it looks kind of tiny. Would you mind? Yeah, sure. Let me use my smaller okay. screen. I didn't okay. think of that. Thank you. How's that? That's great. Thank okay, good. Okay, so you can see here we have our list of videos. And you can expand one of these lists by clicking here on this bar or clicking on this arrow. And you can see the video's completion status. So I've watched every single one of these videos in here. You can see the number of points you've gotten from taking the quizzes. I'm three for three for this first video. You can see the title of the quiz and the number. So 1.01, .01, what is multiple myeloma? Um, some features on the front page you should be aware of. You can bookmark individual videos. So I'll go ahead and bookmark these first three. And if you go over to bookmark lessons here on the left, you can see that those bookmark lessons will show up 1.1, 1 .1, 2, and 3. 
So that could be useful if you want to go back to something later. There are also filters that help you um, navigate a little bit. So my favorite fil feature here for filtering is the search function. So let's say I want to watch something about bone disease. So I just type bone and you can see three videos in my Loma Basics Part 2 about bone marrow biopsies, uh, imaging, and bone lesions. So lesions is maybe something I want to learn more about. I can type the word lesions. Oh, there are two videos about phlytic and focal bone lesions and um, one in the myeloma bone disease unit about lytic lesions. So that's a very useful feature. If you if you um, learned about something recently in myeloma, like chyprolis, and you want to learn more about something really specific, you can you can just use the search function and find it right away. If you're looking for more general things, like show me all the basic videos, you can click basic, and it'll show you all the uh, basic videos that we have. Same thing with, with advanced. We have advanced classes in genetics. We also have beta classes. So these are classes where we haven't gone through and made all the graphics uh, for the videos. Um, but we wanted to push them out to you early so you can see them. So if I click on one of these, you can see that the video is under construction. And so that, that, ju that just means that we haven't added a lot of the graphics that you usually see. So it's just the doctor talking as you can see here. Uh, if I go back to courses, so now we can go to one of our video pages. Let's look at a video where I haven't taken the quiz yet. Looks like I've done a lot of quizzes. <laughs> All right, so we're here in unit four. Uh, what is a navigator and who has them? So you can watch the video. Um, we are working on a feature where every, every video will have transcripts for, for some reason, um, YouTube doesn't always make a transcript for our videos. Um, but for most videos, they will have a transcript. There's a little button here called that says CC on it and you can click that and it'll show, uh, captions for the video. And then you can also click this transcript button below the video and there will be a transcript. I'll, I'll, I'll find a better example about that in a bit. Mm -hmm. And you can also see in the about section, the, the, the doctor or expert who is associated with this video. If you go down lower, you can see the quiz. So true, is that true? True. That's ah, that one and you can finish the lesson. If you wanna give us feedback about something, there's a little blue button right here where you can give us feedback. You can also take notes while you're watching a video. So if I'm, if I'm watching Christina Bach talk about navigation, I can take notes and say navigation is, and you'll see that it auto saves what, everything you, you, you make in your notes. And you can go back and see your notes in the notebook here on the left. Quick notebook and you can see that in unit four on this video, I typed navigation is. And you, if you click on that, you can go to the lesson and your notes are, are still there. You can also delete your notes by just erasing them here or going back to the notebook and clicking this little trash can. You can even print your notes if you wanna take them to your doctor um, during an appointment. Um, some other features we have are this library. So th this is pretty bare bones. It's early days for us um, with this, but there's some, some things you can, other, other resources you can access here. And then here's our faculty list. So our list of all of our faculty members who have helped us create these videos. We are great, very grateful for their help. And you can see every single one of them is an MD or MD PhD or MD FACP. A lot of letters I've never even heard of. Um, these people are very educated. They are the top experts in the entire world um, in this cancer. And then um, when you take a quiz, you earn points. Um, soon we'll have a health tree points store. So you'll be able to redeem 200 points for something like a free ticket to a myeloma crowd round table at an in-person event once we start doing those again, or you'll get a discounted um, trip to ash or something or are you or you or you'll get a hat and a t-shirt for health university or a notebook so look forward to that that's a feature we'll be doing soon 
Um, and I think that about covers it for features of Health Tree University. Good job. Great. Thank you, anything, Paul. Yeah, is there anything else we should talk about, Cindy? I think you went over the basics, you know, about everything that we have. I, I just want to let people know that besides what they see there, that we still have a lot of video that that's raw video that even ha hasn't made it to beta classes. So we're continuing to add beta classes as we're plugging along so that you know you have access to the video that we have. And I, I see a question by Vicki, which is a really good question. She wanted to know if we um, can somehow timestamp the video or, or date stamp the video so they know how timely the information is. And is there a mechanism that, that we use to make sure that they're regularly updated? And at this point, um, we have the dates of when they are, but I, I don't know if there's a date stamp feature that we can add to the videos. That's something Paul might have to look at and um, address. But we do look at them all the time for content. And many times we have voiceovers, like I'm right now I'm working on the Know Your Therapy unit and um, some of their videos for the Know Your Therapy unit might have been recorded a couple months ago, maybe even three or four months ago. And changes have been in, you know, the indications and things like that. So we add a voiceover to those points in the video where there is change. And eventually, you know, we will change and update the video. And, and same way when new things are being learned, we will create a new video. So we're constantly, and I think that's more my job as a curriculum coordinator. I know that's what I did when I was teaching. We would just continually review and update curriculums. And part of my job as the coordinator would be to update any videos when there's um, new information that's learned, or ch especially if there was a change in information that's learned. So, and that, that would go very quickly you know, through our process so that you're not seeing old information that's out of date and can make, could be harmful to you. Paul, anything? Yeah, as you might've seen, I uh, was making a note that we can make that a future um, a feature to be added to the website. So thank you for your input. It's important that our, our information is up to date. There is a lot of, um, of video content there uh, for us to manage. So it would be an important thing for us to, to make a note publicly of when it was filmed. Yeah, and also I encourage people to use you know, that um, feature as you're watching videos, if you find something that you think is out of date or needs more explanation, to write us a note so that we can add to it and make it a, a better system all of us working together. Let's see. Courtney writes that my story is very much like her story. Yeah, the, the back pain and physical therapy is just um, something that many people start in the beginning. You know, I, I, I'm just I, I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't speak up sooner, but that, that, that was me. I just have to keep on pushing myself. So I, I, I like to share my story. So if there's anyone else out there that was like me and doesn't like to question the doctor, you really do. And you really need to educate yourself so you know with what's happening to you is what should be happening. Okay, decipher is still very confusing, mostly because the numbers in the lab print. I don't know. Could you use a could you use a video with graphics helping to understand light chains? So yeah, well, actually, we have a whole unit on understanding your labs, but they they haven't even been brought up to beta. But I agree, it's really important to to um, have the doctors talk about them with graphics because actually all the printouts are not consistent and from lab to lab. So I agree. And that's something we will be working on, David. 
We also do have a couple of videos here about light chains and how <coughs> they're measured and how they're reported. So you might want to check out those videos. Right. So that gives you a little bit of um, basic information, but to that to even have that lab sheet in front of you so you could see how it looks on your lab sheet will be important too. I believe a few of them have my labs in there so that you could see how they're reported on my labs and highlight it. So, mm -hmm. um, Helen, my Lemma Crowd puts out links to new information weekly. Are all the links to studies, ASH overview updates found here also? Paul, can you answer that question? I, I, I'm not sure. So let me actually answer that question. That's okay, Cindy. And excuse the background That's noise. That's fine. Great. If you can hear. <laughs> um, so the myeloma crowd is actually like a sister program to the health tree universities. So they work together. And I think that's something that people don't know is that we're all under that big health tree foundation. So, um, you know, I don't think as of now, health tree university puts out its own links or includes any links to ash or anything like that. But like Paul was showing you, there is that bar on the top of Paul, if you want to show it one more time, just that menu bar on the top, that if you are interested in navigating between Health Tree University and Myeloma Crowd, where those, like, like Helen was saying, those links to new info are coming out weekly, that's how you can navigate and, and get to the information that, that you need. So not a perfect answer, but I hope that explains and makes a little bit more clear how Health Tree University and Myeloma Crowd are related. Yeah, and, and Helen, to your point, I think we do want to get to a point where we can include um, content from the Myeloma Crowd site regularly in Health Tree University. So if there's a really good article about a specific drug, um, that it'll be included in the in a, in a field underneath the video for how prevalent is myeloma or like about a specific drug. So that is a good comment. Um, that's a feature we are not working on yet, but we can in the future. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if you talked about this when you were explaining Health Tree University, another feature that we're working on, it's a work in progress, is our forums. When there's a particular forum that relates to a class, we have a link to join that forum in there so that you could discuss information in that class that might be in that class with others. So, um, yeah, we're working on that, trying to make it a little bit more active and engaging than it than it has been in the past. We have so much to work on. <laughs> we do. But but you know, I, I think what we have out there is is important for you to get started. It's just a work in progress, and we really didn't want to wait till everything was done and perfect to share it with you because we had all this important information and things that you could learn through specialists and we just didn't want it sitting in our computers gathering dust until it was in a perfect condition. So um, that kind of makes sense. Um, I'm not quite sure what me paper maker is asking, but uh, on a monitor, some tests. Any suggestions on indicators patients can help their condition? Now, the, 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 there's two ways I'm taking that question. First way I'm taking it is what labs should you be using to monitor your condition? And we do have in our set in our course. Uh, a list of what type of myeloma labs you should be getting so that you're knowing that your condition is stable or if it's progressing and what those tests look like and how often those tests should be having. The second part of that I'm thinking is you're thinking of what can you as a patient do to help you know with your myeloma. And that actually is going to be uh, one of our future classes, we're thinking of a class on complementary and and alternative, well, not really alternative, but complementary and integrative therapies, ways that you might work on diet, 
I, I know through Health Health Tree, there is a study that Dr. Shaw is running on about diet in smoldering myeloma patients. And if that influences how quickly um, someone will progress to active myeloma, but we also want to interview some specialists on, you know, maybe the use of meditation, acupuncture, um, just other things that are under your control that may, I don't know if it would help your myeloma, but it would definitely help your whole psyche. So that, that's in the works. Great, thank you, Cindy. We have another question that says, how substantial is the input of Europeans? I'm thinking both specialists and patients. Well, right now we are gauging most of our understanding your therapy with the US population in mind. But when the doctors do describe the different therapies, they do talk about you know, how those indications are used in Europe because some of, some of the drugs that are available here are not available in Europe. And some of the therapies that are more readily used over in Europe, like melphalan, is not very commonly used here. So we try to address it. And many of the basic classes in the myeloma labs and things like that are standard from here in the United States to Europe. But I think more of the know your therapy is individualized according to your country and what is approved in your country. Thank you. Um, is there a how-to video on creating and updating lab results for the website? I'm assuming they're talking about how to yeah, at the moment, I don't think so, but I think that is something uh, we could work on. And uh, yeah, there are, see, you can add, you can add them manually. You can um, have our, our, our uh, patient success team help you import your labs from your portal. Um, we can even get a paper record of all your records and upload them. Um, you can use your phone and use health, the Health Tree Connect app to um, get all your labs into Health Tree. So there's a there's a bunch of different ways you can get your labs into uh, Health Tree Cure Hub. Um, but maybe one of the things we should do is create a video th that you can watch here to help you go through that process. So thank you. That's valuable input, and I will pass that along to our team. See, this is what we like. We like suggestions from people that are users to help us make what we're doing even better. So that's great. And here's I another suggestion. Agree. The graphs in the myeloma labs are not user-friendly. Do you have any plans to iterate this, these more visually? We can pass that along to the Health Tree Cure Hub team for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I assume what you're saying is like, I can't um, easily change all this kind all this stuff. Um, so yeah, we, we can iterate on that. And if you have any suggestions for us, go ahead and email us. Yeah. Like um, what, what, what would you like to see in there? What features yeah, what, what aren't you there? Here? Yeah, go ahead and, go I ahead agree. <laughs> it, it's nice over time, but you know, um, Health Tree University right now is being funded by grants. So um, that, that, that's how, and I guess, you know, the best way there is um, to make also a contribution to the Health Tree Foundation. I, I, I'm not really good with that area of the whole thing. I, I just work on Health Tree University, so. <laughs> yeah, the, the way I think it's working right now is we are funded entirely by grants from generous sponsors. Um, if you do wanna make a donation to the foundation, 100% of your dollars go towards funding research. And we've set it up that way because we want every dollar you, you donate to go to research. Uh, so that that's how it works. And thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. That's a very generous and, and considered uh, kind question. <laughs> um, 
All right. Uh, there's a suggestion to do videos on nutrition. I think that's an excellent um, suggestion. We can get Dr. Sean talking about the her works. study we even and talking that about. Works. That's in awesome. the works. It's going Super to be on our supplemental and complementary and integrative therapy unit. So they're definitely in the works because it's something that are asked for all the time. Understanding labs. Yes. We, we, we actually have a lot of um, video already taken on understanding labs. We just need to bring it up to the, to the beta and then in there. So maybe we could write that as a, a note to try to get that understanding your lab videos up in the beta form. Yeah, I think we'll make that a priority based on what we've seen today. Yeah, all of them is understanding your lab values. Yeah, understanding into <laughs> values. This Can you show me how to put my labs in? Okay. This is very useful for us. Is that lab seems to be that, you know, important thing that we really need to, yeah. after we're done the current unit we're working on to address on that. Okay. Will the app So work? let me, I want to make something clear. Yeah, that, that question that you're just about to read, Cindy, will the app work with Android phone to put lab results into help to university? Um, so <laughs> we're actually, the, the, the lab results, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it goes into Health Tree Cure Hub, which is very separate from Health Tree University. So you want to actually put any lab results into Health Tree University, the app connects to Health Tree Cure Hub. There, there would be no way to put it into Health Tree University. Health Tree University are the videos that prompt you, um, like we can create tutorials about how to fill out things on Health Tree Care Hub, and there's videos to watch to educate you about myeloma. But it is not the same program where you put in your lab results. Again, it's another sister program, like I was talking about earlier, to Health Tree Care Hub, previously known as Health Tree, and that is where you put in your lab results and you get to track your labs and things like that. So I just wanted to make that important distinction between the programs. I know it does get confusing because all of them are underneath the Health Tree Foundation. There's Health Tree Care Hub where you put your labs and there's Health Tree University where you, it's an online curriculum and then there's Myeloma Crowd. We're working on, our, on all of the programs as a big organization called Health Tree Foundation. So, in regards to whether the app is going to work with the Android phone, I don't know that. Paul, do you know? So yeah, so currently we're, we, we use a, a system called Apple Health and uh, Android does not currently have a similar system. Apple Health lets you have all your records on your device and nowhere else. Um, it's, yeah, and, and it's not something that Android phones can currently do. So we, we don't have a Android app in the works at the moment, but there are three or four other ways for you to get your labs into Health Tree. You can, direct, you can directly connect with your EHR portal. So you can, you can type in your login information and then we will pull all your records from your portal into Health Tree. You can also upload your medical records. So if you have a PDF or something, you can upload them. You can also add them manually. So if you have a paper copy and you just want to type it in, you can do that. And you we can um, get your paper record for you, scan it, and put it into Health Tree. So there's there are four different ways where we can get your records, and um, we're doing our best. That records is really hard, and labs are really hard. So I understand all the confusion and the desire to make it an easier process. So thank you for your input. And I guess another input about labs is they want to know if there's a, a way to add additional labs that are not already listed in. At this point, I don't think there is, but something we could bring back to the developers if we think that's important. Paul? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, we can do that. Regarding, yeah. Well, it looks like we know which with which uh, Health Tree University class to work on next. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. There's no no doubt about that. Yeah, lab seems to be the the hot topic today. Yeah. If you guys have any other questions, you're more than welcome to, or suggestions, you're more than welcome to type them into the chat. Um, 
I'll give you guys a couple more minutes and then if we're good, then we'll finish up today. Yeah. yeah. And Noah, I, I please note that each switches in and out of consciousness. which is in and out of the question and answer box minimizes and needs to Yeah, that's a Zoom thing we have no control of, so. Okay. I don't, I don't know what we do about that. Um, yes, we can, we can make it so the subject and the from message is more consistent, so it's easier to find our messages. That's a good comment, thank you. Okay. Um, Audrey, do you know how to transfer labs from the University of Texas Southwest? I'm not sure if they're on our Apple Health Partnered list. If they are not, there is a, I mean, our, our team can do it for you and that's pretty flawless. You would just need to sign a, sign a form as we mentioned earlier. So if you actually want to reach out, um, as I mentioned, I will be sending this recording out to all registrants and I'll also you know that way you'll have my email as well so that you'll be able to correspond with me if you are interested in having us import your labs into Health Tree Cure Hub or if you had any suggestions or questions that didn't get touched on today um, I will make sure that you will have my email and, and a good way to contact us so that you can you can make those suggestions and that we can we can give you those help with with the labs our goal is to help you. It's our number one goal. And so we appreciate your feedback today and your patience with us as we navigate working from home. Um, it's exciting to, to be a part of this. So um, just as a follow-up, the negative of transferring your data, um, it might take a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. If you're talking about transferring the data from your, from your hospital, like from University of Texas to HealthTree, we just get a copy of your records. So it wouldn't be con completely switching your records over. Yeah, so um, Ross and Debbie Walker, what I would recommend you do is go to the, the lab section of HealthTree. So healthtree.org slash labs. And once you're there, if you get stuck on this page and you're not sure what to do exactly, just click this little chat button in the bottom right corner. And then one of our, uh, our, our patient success team members can help you get your labs entered in. Uh, that's what they do all day. They love to do it and they're willing to help you day or night to get your labs in. So I would, I would start here if you uh, can't figure it out from this page. And isn't there like a number they could call if they really want to talk to somebody about the labs and yeah, and I'll include that about. in the follow up email as yeah, well. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll we have that. a number that you can text or call. Mm -hmm. right. I and, also and want to be Audrey, very you clear. You can put my email in that follow up email too for questions okay. on Health Tree University. You know, especially topic suggestions for Health Tree University. Yeah, yeah. perfect. I will do that. Um, all right, we're gonna end for today, but I really do appreciate uh, Before we your end, time. I have to do something, Audrey, because okay. I, I, I just wanted to do this all, the whole meeting and <laughs> I, I, I am ready to continue. I am not a cat. I am the Health Tree University Curriculum Director. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I, I've Thank been you. behind in doors just too long. <laughs> I will remove it before I get fired from my job. <laughs> if you don't understand the reference, there was a funny um, viral video that went around where a lawyer accidentally put on a cat filter and didn't know how to take it off. So thanks for bringing joy into my life, Cindy. I, I appreciate it. Uh, if you did ask a question or something that didn't get answered, we'll make sure to to reach out to you as well um, and, and get that question answered as we have kept track of all of the, all of the questions today. Uh, I will finish by, can you see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, our next Connect with Myeloma chapter meeting will be on April 17th, 2021.
at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern. That's going to be part two in our Health Tree Cure Hub series. So lots of you are asking questions about lab results today. Um, we will be talking more about Health Tree and its different features. Uh, it's going to be a great meeting led by our team. So if you are interested in that, um, we will do our best to answer the questions that you have now. But this would be a great uh, session to attend to learn more about Health Tree Cure Hub because we know that lots of people have many questions about this. Upcoming events in the Myeloma Community Program on Thursday, February 18th, which is tomorrow, we will have our newly diagnosed myeloma patients chapter event. We'll be discussing why physicians are optimistic about newly diagnosed myeloma and Dr. Sarah Lee from UW Medical Center will be moderating the Q&A. On Wednesday, February the 24th, excuse me, at 11 a.m. will be our Selenexor support group event. If you are using Selenexor as a part of your treatment or you are a caregiver of somebody on Selenexor or perhaps you've just heard of this new drug and you want to learn more about it, you are more than welcome to, <laughs> um, <laughs> to attend this meeting with us. Come here, bud. It's okay. Come here. So on February the 25th at 12 p.m., we will be launching our African American Myeloma chapter, and we will be discussing how to be our best advocate. And then that link on the bottom will be sent to you as well on the follow up email so that you can sign up for any of those events. We want to thank our community sponsors. Uh, you can see who they are here. <laughs> and we'd just like to thank you for sharing this time with us today. And we hope that you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye-bye all. You almost made it to the end. <laughs> <laughs>